Haman was summoned to attend the banquet Queen Esther had prepared for him and the king. As they were drinking wine, the king asked, What is it your request? Even if is half of my kingdom it will be granted. My request is that you save my life and the lives of my people. Esther replied, We are to be destroyed. Who has dared to threaten your life? The king demanded to know. An enemy, replied Esther. This vile Haman. Haman looked terrified. The king got up in a rage and went out into the palace garden. Haman started begging Esther to save his life. The king returned to find Haman falling on the couch where Esther was reclining. Guards were called to seize Haman. One of the king's attendants reported. Haman has erected a pole by his house. He was planning to impale Mordecai on it. Impale Haman on it, the king ordered. Haman was led out to be executed. Then the king's fury subsided. That day the king gave Esther Haman's estate. Esther told the king she was related to Mordecai. The king gave Mordecai Haman's signet ring and Esther appointed him to look after Haman's riches and possessions. Esther fell at the king's feet weeping and begging him to put a stop to the evil plan to kill the Jews. If it pleases the king, let an order be written overruling Haman's plan. As Haman threatened the Jews, I have impaled him on the pole he set up. The king replied, But the documents, which written in my name, cannot be changed. Therefore, write another decree in my name, which is help for you and your people, and sealed with my signet ring. The royal secretaries were summoned. A new law was written giving the Jews the right to gather and defend themselves if anyone attacked them. They could also plunder the properties of their enemies. Copies of the new law were sent out through the 127 provinces of the empire. Everyone knew the Jews would be ready and waiting if anyone attacked them on the 13th day of the 12th month. When Mordecai left the palace he was wearing a royal purple robe and crown. The Jews celebrated the news and their enemies became afraid of them. The 13th day of the 12th month was the date the enemies of the Jews hoped to destroy them. The Jews gathered to defend themselves, helped by the governors and nobles of the provinces. Any group who attacked them were struck down and killed. In the capital city of Susa, Haman's ten sons and another five hundred men, who hated the Jews were destroyed. But the Jews did not plunder their belongings. Permission was given to the Jews to continue dealing with their enemies the next day also. In the provinces, seventy-five thousand of those who planned to destroy the Jews were annihilated. Mordecai recorded these events and sent letters to the Jews asking them celebrate this victory every year on the fourteenth and fifteenth days of the twelfth month. Haman had plotted and cast a lot, known as a pure, to destroy the Jews. So the celebration was called the Feast of Purim. It was a day of feasting and joy. People gave presents to each other. The Jews have kept this custom every year, through every generation, to this very day.